Welcome to this Easy 11 Plus short lesson on long division. If this is useful, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to check out the free papers and solutions linked in the video description. Let's get started. The first thing to do here is to write down the numbers using the bus stop method that you will be familiar with. When we're doing long division, we're going to have quite long columns of numbers, so it's important to space out these digits here so that things will be nice and clearly separated later on in our working. And then we go through like this. Does 17 go into 8? No, it doesn't because 17 is larger than 8. Does 17 go into 80? Clearly it does because 80 is larger than 17. Now, how many times does 17 go into 80? Now you can do this writing 17 times 2, 17 times 3, 17 times 4, but this will take you a little while, so it's better if we can use some shortcuts. Now we know that two 17s are 34, and this means that four 17s must be 68. Can we fit one more 17 in? So 68 plus 7 is 75, and another 10 is it? No, we can't. So there must be four 17s in 80. And so we write the four, above the zero here, in other words, above the last digit of 80. And now we say, what's four times 17? And we know that already because we just worked it out. Then we draw a line and we subtract. I haven't actually done a formal subtraction process there because it's quite clear that 80 minus 68 is 12. Now the next thing we need to do is bring down the next digit, which is five. You don't need to draw that down arrow in, I've just added that for clarity at this stage. And now we go through the process again, but with 125. So how many times does 17 go into 125? The best way to do this kind of thing is to use the knowledge that we've already developed while solving the previous parts of the question. So we know that 17 goes into 68 four times. Okay, so What's two lots of 68? Two lots of 60 is 120, two lots of 8 is 16, so two lots of 68 is 136. So we know that 17 goes into 136 eight times, and that must mean that it goes into 125 seven times. And then we repeat the process. Seven times 17 is so it's going to be 136 minus 17. If you're good at mental arithmetic, you can see that minus seven is 129, minus another 10 is 119, so that's going to be the answer here. But there's nothing wrong with doing a quick multiplication at the side to make sure. And then again, we have two numbers down here, so we know that it's time to subtract. 125 minus 119, of course, that's six. And once again, we now need to pull down the next digit. How many times does 17 go into 68? We know this already, it's four times. And that goes exactly, so our answer is 474. Let's think about the process that we've used here. Now it can look very complicated, so you need to remember each stage, so you need to remember divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. And it can be a good idea to remember that, so it's like this. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, and then repeat. But when I do this, I just follow the shape of the problem that's in front of me. So for example, at the beginning, when I've just got the bus stop, I know that I'm going to be dividing, because as with any bus stop division problem, I'm thinking how many times does 17 go into each thing in a row. And then when I've got a number on top, what can I do with that? The only obvious thing to do with it is to multiply. And when I've got two numbers on top of each other, like this or like this, it looks just like a setup for an addition or for a subtraction. And so I know that I need to subtract. And then when I've subtracted, I know that I need to pull a number down to get something that I can conveniently divide 17 into, and so on. So once you get used to this process, you don't need to remember divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. You just need to get used to the shape of the problem and that will guide you to doing the next step. And that's why the best way to get the hang of long division is just to do lots of them until the process is obvious to you. So we've got some pretty awkward numbers here. 29, it's a prime number. 
it's not that small and convenient a prime number, you certainly won't have learnt your 29 times table, and so this is going to take some thought. Does 29 go into 1? No. Does it go into 17? No. Does it go into 171? Yes, surely, but this is a bit fiddly. So how can we get an estimate of how many times 29 goes into 171 that we can then check? Well, 29 is very near to 30, and we know that 30 goes into 150 five times. So it might be a fair guess that 29 goes into 171 only five times. Let's check that by doing 29 times 6 to make sure that that's a little bit larger. And we can see that 29 times 6 is 174, so it must be indeed 5 times. What's 5 times 29? You can work it out in the same way, but multiplying by 5 is actually quite easy. You just need to multiply by 10 and then half it. So 29 times 10 is 290. Half of 290 is 145. You half 200 and half 90. Now we need to subtract. And now we need to bring down the next number. I'm not going to draw the arrow this time because we're getting used to it. How many times does 29 go into 269? Well, this looks really difficult, but if you think in terms of easy multiples, it isn't so bad, because 269 is quite close to 290, which would be 10 times 29. So 290 minus 29 is 261. So that means that 29 goes into 269 nine times, giving us 261 when we do 9 times 29. That might be a slightly complicated way of explaining it, but I'm trying to get you into the mindset of somebody who's used to doing these problems. So what we've done there, we've brought down the 9. We said, how many times does 29 go into 269? We found out by one method or another that it goes in 9 times. And now we've done 9 times 29 is 261. How do we do that so quickly without needing to do a multiplication over here? Well, we say that 10 times 29 is 290. And if you want to subtract 29 from 290, just take away 30, which is 260, and add another 1 back on. Now we need to subtract, and we need to bring down the 7, 87. How many times does 29 go into 87? Well, you can count up, you can say 29, then you can do 2 times 29, and so on. But actually, again, there's a bit of a shortcut here. 29 is close to 30, 3 30s are 90. For each 29 we add on, we're actually one less than the 30 times table. So by the time we've done 3 times 29, we'll be 3 less than 3 times 30. In other words, 3 less than 90, which is 87. 87 is 3 lots of 29. How else could you do this? 3 lots of 20 are 60. 3 lots of 9 are 27. Add them together, you get 87. So the answer is 593. Again, notice I'm keeping the digits under the bus shelter nicely spaced out so that things don't get mixed up later on. That's especially important when, like me, you're quite a messy writer, whether it's English or maths. 18 doesn't go into 6, of course. How many times does it go into 67? So you'll be getting the hang of this by now. 18 is very close to 20, and we know that 20 goes into 60 three times. So it's almost certainly three times. Let's check that. 3 times 18. 3 times 18 is 54, so the answer is clearly 3 times. I often find that it's useful to do multiplications like this early on in a problem, because these basic multiplications, 3 times 18, 4 times 18, and so on, they'll be useful for us later on as shortcuts in our later divisions and multiplications. 67 minus 54, we know we have to minus, because now we've got a minus problem set up here. 67 minus 54. You can do this formally, or you can just look at it and see that 54, another 10 is 64, another 3 is 67. And when you've done the subtraction like this, you can have a number here that's too small, and so we have to bring down the next digit. So it becomes 135. We're doing this, but we're not drawing it anymore because we know what we're doing. How many times does 18 go into 135. Well, this is where we can start to use the information that we've already got. 18 times 3 is 54, so 18 times 6 must be 108. OK, we can clearly add another 18 to that and still be under 135. 
so it's going to be 7 times. 7 times 18, well 18 times 6 was 108, add another 18 to that, we'll add 20 to it, so 128, take off 2, 126. Again, there's nothing wrong with doing the multiplications over here to check everything, and indeed, if you're likely to make mistakes, that's very important, but long division is one of these things where if you've got good mental arithmetic and it's reliable, it will save you a lot of time. It's a matter of balance between accuracy, which is very important, and speed. Now we've got a subtraction set up here, so again, we need to subtract. 135 minus 126 is, of course, 9. We need to bring down the next digit. 95. By the way, you always need to bring down the next digit, and you know you need to bring down the next digit because the result here, this or this, will always be smaller than this. If it isn't smaller, you made a mistake earlier on, and you put a value that was too small over here. Now we need to work out how many times 18 goes into 95. We know that 18 times 10 is 180, and half of that is 90. So 18 times 5 is 90. So clearly it goes in five times. So what have I done there? Of course, I've done 5 times 18 is 90. We just worked that out. I've subtracted to give 5, and I've brought down the 4. So the system will be becoming very natural to you by now, I hope. How many times does 18 go into 54? We've already worked that out. It goes in three times. And that's it. 3,753. And one thing you'll definitely be picking up from this lesson is that efficient and speedy long division involves having efficient and speedy mental arithmetic and also being good at the kind of shortcuts that enable you to produce reasonably close estimates of how many times a number goes into another number without working everything out precisely at every stage. This question is a bit different because it invites you to round your answer to two decimal places. Now that might not make complete sense to you if you haven't studied rounding yet. Don't worry, it's something I'm going to cover very soon in another video on this channel. And if you're watching this video in the future, I might already have done it. What this does tell you anyway is that we aren't going to get a nice, neat, whole number answer or even an answer that finishes naturally after a couple of decimal places. We're going to have to find a point to cut this answer off. And round it. How many times is 23 going to 39? Of course it's only going to go once because two lots of 23 will be 46. 1 times 23 is 23. Subtract and we get 16. Bring down the 1 so we've got something that 23 will go into. How many times does 23 go into 161. This is a bit awkward, but again, let's think in terms of things that we can approximate. 23 times 10 is 230, so 23 times 5 is 115. Add 23 to that, we'll add 3, 118. Add 20, 138. Okay, so we know that 23 times 6 is 138. Let's note that down because it's worth knowing for the rest of this. If you work out any entries in, for example, the 23 times table, it's worth noting them down because they're likely to help you later on in your working. While we're here, what would 23 times 7 be? Would it be greater or smaller than 161? So we need to add 23 to this, add 3, 141, add 20, 161. So this actually goes in exactly. 7 times 23 is 161. So we subtract these and we get 0. And we bring down the 4 and we have 4. 23 doesn't go into that, so what can we do with this? 23 goes into 4 no times. Do we bring down a number? Have we made a mistake? No. It just means that the answer line contains a 0. It goes in 0 times and we follow the process. 0 times 23 is 0. 4 minus 0 is 4. Bring down the 7 is 47. How many times does 23 go into 47? It goes in 2 times because 2 times 23 is 46. 2 times 23 is 46. Subtract, we get 1. Bring down the... Uh, what do we do here? If you get to the end of a division problem and you haven't found a neat answer and you need to continue, we put a decimal point here and another one here, and we start adding zeros. Now, here's the point where if you 
aren't completely comfortable with rounding, you may not completely understand what I'm doing, but I'll do my best to explain it. So we're going to add three zeros here. For a start, it's important to remember that you can add as many zeros after a decimal point as you want without changing the value of a number. One is the same as 1.0, it's the same as 1.00, it's the same as 1.00000, and so on, as long as they're all zeros, because 0, 0.0 means and nothing else. Why have I added three zeros when we need the answer to two decimal places? This is to do with rounding. So if I have something, if my answer is 0.236 and I round that to the first two places, 0.23 will become 0.24 because the last one is rounded up by the six afterwards. Whereas if I had 0.233, my answer would be 0.23 because three is less than five, so it doesn't cause us to round up. If you don't completely understand that, it's something for another lesson. Just follow the technique here and get, a, get the hang of what I'm doing with the division. So that's why I've added three zeros here, because I need one more decimal place than the number of places I'm going to round to, so I know whether to round up or round down. That's the important thing to remember from this. So now we've got something to bring down. We need to bring down the zero. How many times does 23 go into 10? zero times. Zero times 23 is zero. I'm running out of space here, but we can scroll. Zero. 10 minus zero is 10. Bring down the next zero. Okay, I'm going to put an arrow in now, actually, just so we are clear about which column we're on, so we don't get lost. How many times does 23 go into 100? Well, we know that 23 times 5 is 115, so it must be four times. Four times 23, well 4 times 20 is 80, 4 times 3 is 12, so it's going to be 92. I've made a bit of a mistake here, this is all, this is overlapping the copyright notice at the bottom of the page, but never mind, we'll work around that. So 100 minus 92 is 8, if you can just about see that. And now we need to bring down the next zero. How many times does 23 go into 80? Well we know that 4 times 23 is 92, as we said, so it must be three times. Now at this point we could keep carrying on, possibly forever. Three times 23 is 69, subtract, and so on. But we only need to find our answer to two decimal places. Quite a lot of circling going on there by now. And we've already found an answer to one, two, three digits after the decimal point. And that's all we need to round it to two decimal places. And so if you're familiar with this rounding, you do it like this. You count the first two decimal places, 0, 4, and then you look at the one afterwards, which here is 3. And we say to ourselves, if this is 5 or greater, we round up, so the 0, 4 becomes 0, 5. If it isn't, we leave it as it is. 3 is not 5 or greater, so we don't round up. So our answer to two decimal places is 1702.04. 1702 1702.04. You've already been told to round this to two decimal places, so you don't need to say that you've done it, but it's always good practice to do so. And so you put a note in brackets, 2dp, which tells the person looking at your answer that it's rounded to two decimal places. I hope that's useful. If it isn't completely clear yet, and the process isn't completely instinctive for you, which it won't be if this video is the first time that you've studied long division, then the only real solution is practice, practice, practice. And the other thing that goes with this is working on your times tables so that they're really strong and then you can take those skills into coming up with times tables for the more awkward numbers that you might encounter while doing long division. I hope that was helpful. Please subscribe to this channel, it makes me very happy. Please check out the free papers and solutions linked in the video description and I hope to see you next Tuesday at 6 o'clock for my next Easy 11 Plus live lesson. Bye bye.